We're going to define solubility, distinguish between a saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solution. Recognize that a saturated solution is in a state of solubility, in short, is going to be the ability to dissolve. And this is different for every substance. So, for example, salt can dissolve in water, but you can't dissolve a lot of salt in water. And if you change temperature, it doesn't necessarily change how much salt you can dissolve very much. You can dissolve a lot of sugar in water, and if you increase the temperature of a solution, then you can actually dissolve a lot more sugar in the water. So solubility is going to be how much of a substance can be dissolved in order to create what's going to be known as a saturated solution with a set amount of solvent. So in other words, you know, per every 10 grams of water or per every 100 grams of water, a very specific amount of solvent and at a specific temperature. So the temperature can't be changing, the amount of the solvent can be cannot be changing, and it's going to be given this X amount of solvent and Y specified temperature, how much of my solute can I dissolve in my solvent? So for example, sugar, so long as your solution is at 20 degrees Celsius, and if you have exactly 100 grams of water, then this is the maximum amount of sugar that could be dissolved in this much water and at this temperature. If one of these two things changes, then that changes the solubility of the sugar or the amount that could be dissolved. So there are three categories of solubility. There's saturated, which is the max amount that can be dissolved. Unsaturated, which is less than the max. And there's supersaturated, which is more than the max. And this one is very special because it has to be forced to be more than the max. And we'll talk about how that happens in a minute. So an unsaturated solution is you can dissolve more solute. So if you have, say, a glass of water, and if you were to dissolve some salt into the water, it would all disappear and you'd have nothing sink to the bottom. There would be nothing settling out to the bottom. Eventually, all the particles that you dissolved will disappear into the solution because they will have dissolved. And so once you've gotten them all to disappear, then realize that the solution is considered unsaturated because more could potentially be dissolved into the solution. So I could potentially dissolve more particles into the solution. If those disappear, it's still unsaturated because I'm able to dissolve even more into the solution. And until you reach the point where you start having particles settle to the bottom, it continues to be an unsaturated solution. What's very important to note is that this is provided that the temperature is kept constant. If the temperature changes, then that's going to change the amount of solute that can be dissolved. So a solution that contains less solute than a saturated solution under existing conditions. A saturated solution is when no more solute can be dissolved. So, for example, if we go back to our glass of water, and let's just say you poured so much sugar into your glass of water at constant temperature that eventually everything disappeared except I have some so sugar that has settled to the bottom. Because I have some of the particles settled at the bottom, I have reached the maximum. No more solute can be dissolved. So when you're at the max, it is a saturated solution. No more can be dissolved. It contains the maximum amount of dissolved solute at this temperature. If I change the temperature, I change how much I can dissolve. Keep that in mind. So also please realize that when you have a saturated solution, then the solution is in a state of equilibrium. And what this means is you have two opposite processes occurring simultaneously, where I have what's known as dissolving and recrystallization. So these particles are dissolving into the solution, and then there are particles that are 
undissolving or recrystallizing out of the solution. Recrystallizing. So there's dissolving and recrystallizing having happening in a cycle. Dissolving, recrystallizing in a cycle. So it's two opposing processes at the same time, and that is known as a state of equilibrium. Okay, a supersaturated solution, you should know, is a very unstable solution. So it's very unstable. It occurs when you force a solution to dissolve more so if I take my glass of water and I create a saturated solution, it has the maximum amount dissolved it could possibly have. It cannot dissolve anymore. And I'm adding so much salt that no more is going to, it's all sinking to the bottom. If I want to make it super saturated, I'm going to go through a process. The first part of that process is I'm going to heat my solid. And when I heat it, then this is actually going to increase the solubility and cause what I have currently settled at the bottom to dissolve into the solution. So let's say after heating it, all of this dissolved. So now at the hotter temperature, I have what's called an unsaturated solution. So it is currently unsaturated after heating. Then, so that's what it is right now. Then I'm gonna stop heating the solution and we're gonna allow it to cool down. So after I forced it to dissolve the extra solute, I'm now going to allow it to cool off, which is going to change the dynamic because as it cools down, the solubility reduces. So it becomes unsaturated. I'm going to heat it, make it become unsaturated. Then I'm going to cool it, and after it finishes cooling, that's when it becomes a super saturated solution. So after it has been cooled down, my ice cubes, then you now have a very unstable supersaturated solution. Because it's so unstable, if you were to actually disturb, disturbing the solution will cause a phenomenon known as recrystallization, where all the extra that I forced it to dissolve are going to actually come out of the solution. So they will undissolve or recrystallize. So let me show you what a picture of this looks like. If I have a super saturated solution here, so this solution first was heated, that's the key. First it was heated, then it was cooled. And after it was cooled down, it became a super saturated solution, which is very unstable. You can deserve, disturb it in several ways. You can drop what's known as a seed, which is another particle of the solute that's been dissolved, which would then crash into the particles that have been forced to be dissolved and when it does that they will actually recrystallize or come back out of the solution so they will no longer be dissolved they will undissolve or recrystallize and so here is after it's completely recrystallized from the solution you can actually do this over and over again so I could take this solution I could heat it and then it would all redissolve again. And then if I cool this down, it becomes super saturated. I can disturb it, recrystallize it. And then after I recrystallize it, I can take this, heat it again, and the cycle begins over again.